Hello friends, my name is Vikas. So friends, let's start. In today's video, we will be discussing about the budget for the year 2022 and 2023. So friends, we have an app by the name Carriers Cloud, which you can go and download through the Play Store. Once you have downloaded and logged in through your Gmail ID, you will be transferred to this page. And you can see here various all courses and various other sections provided to us. The courses that are provided by our team are very helpful and they will be very useful in your preparation. In the courses that we provide, we give you daily current affairs, weekly current affairs and monthly current affairs. In daily current affairs, we will be providing you with multiple quiz of 20 questions daily. Then we'll be giving you the daily current affairs content also. Similarly for weekly, we will be providing you 50 questions of quiz on weekly basis as well as all the important current affairs of that week will be given to you in an ebook. Similarly for monthly basis. Apart from this, we'll be providing you with banking awareness and all the banking relating exams. So don't worry, your preparation is in our hands. We'll be providing you with the best content. Apart from this, then you should know we've covered topic wise important daily topic wise or the monthly topic wise are covered in our course we'll give you 20 types of such pdf that will cover apps and web portals important days books and authors national affairs international affairs sports awards applications and web portals and defense sector all the topics that you see of general studies are basically covered here as you saw, we provide current affairs in English, Hindi, banking affairs, exam PDF, special current affairs, topic wise current affairs are provided to you, state current affairs, then topic wise quizzes are provided to you. There is another section in special current affairs that is learn from picture and we have named this infographics. Infographics are your interactive PDFs that you can interact with. They are highly informative. I highly suggest you to go and check these out because they will be helping you to learn things in an interactive way so do check them out they will be very valuable to you all you have to do is to purchase our course you can use code vikas10 that will be giving you an additional 10 percent discount on the purchase you make so it is a bumper offer all you have to do is go and download our app and check our courses so friends we'll start with our session so friends let's start in today's video, we will be discussing about the budget for the year 2022 and 2023. Highly important video, we will be discussing multiple questions in this that will help you for your preparation. I know budget is a difficult topic and it is not easy for everyone to read. So in this video, we have narrowed it down to some important one-liners as well as the points that will help you to know the information all right you should not know all the budget you should not know 100 percent of the budget but you should definitely know the important points that should be covered all right so what type of question can be asked from the budget what are the budget related things everything will be discussed in this video so let's start before starting the budget let me give you some important date that you should know on 1st of feb 2022 our budget was released you should know this who released it? It was released by our finance minister, Nirmala Sitaramanji. These two things, first of all, you need to pay attention. When was it released? It was released on the 1st of February 2022. And who released it? It was released by our finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. Alright, two things you should know first. Then, moving on to the budget. But tell me, if we are talking about government, alright, from where does the government earn money? From where... From which sectors government earn money? See, as you know, we are paying income tax to the government. So 15% of the total revenue that government earns is of income tax. Union excise duty 7%. Corporation tax, these big corporations, big MNCs, they are paying 15% tax of the total or you can say the total amount the government is earning. They are earning 15% from the corporation tax. Then goods and service tax, customs, non-tax revenue, borrowing and other liabilities, non-debit collect, capital receipts. So these are the various sectors from which the government are earning money. All right. Then from government, the money, as you know, for development and even to pay salaries to the government employees, the government should have some amount of money. And they are also spending in various infrastructures, various initiatives, various schemes in defense. All right. So let's see. We know pension is also given by the government to their employees. So 4% of the revenue that government earns is given to the pension. 9% to other expenditures. 15% to the central sector schemes. 
टेन परसेंट टू फाइनेंस कमीशन एंड अदर ट्रांसफर सेवन परसेंट टू द स्टेट शेयर ऑफ टैक्सेज एंड ड्यूटीज ट्वेंटी परसेंट टू द इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट एट परसेंट इज एलोकेटेड फॉर द डिफेंस सेक्टर फॉर प्रोक्योरिंग वेरियस मशीनरीज वेरियस टैंक्स वेरियस मिसाइल्स एंड एनी अदर इक्विपमेंट रिलेटेड टू योर डिफेंस देन एट परसेंट टू द वेरियस सब्सिडीज गिवन टू द स्कीम्स और गिवन टू द पीपल ऑन परचेजमेंट ऑफ एनी बेसिक नेसेसिटी और एनी बेसिक गुड्स सच एज योर फूड और बेसिक योर एल पी जी सिलेंडर्स और योर मेडिसिन एंड नाइन परसेंट टू सेंट्रल स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम्स सो दिस इज हाउ देर इज अ ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ वेरियस सेक्टर हाउ द मनी कम्स टू द गवर्नमेंट एंड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट हाउ इज मनी गोइंग टू द वेरियस सेक्टर्स और बेसिकली यू कैन से डायरेक्टली टू द पब्लिक सो दिस इज अ सर्कल और राइट लेट्स कम टू द बजट नाउ in which article is the budget mention so remember article 112 is the article of the constitution of india in which the there is a mention of union budget so if it is asked the budget is related to which article article 112 you need to pay attention next thing let me mark here next thing union budget also known as annual financial statement either union budget or your annual financial statement both are same thing all right every year it is presented on the last working day of the february by the finance minister of india all right but we saw that it was presented on the 1st of february 2022 by nirmala sitaraman why so because after in 2017 arun jetli who was the finance minister in 2014 started presenting the union budget on 1st of feb departing from the colonial era tradition of using the last working day of that month that means before 2017 that means till 2016 the finance or the annual financial statement or the union budget was presented on the last working day of the feb but starting from 2017 this big, uh, this started process of presenting the budget on the first debord you can say the on the first work of the or you can say started presenting the union budget on the 1st of february that is the reason this year in 2022 it was presented on the 1st of february so every time in coming years also it will be presented on 1st of february question can be asked this change started in which year and by whom it was started in the year 2000 start 17 and the person or the finance minister who brought this change was arun jetli another important thing so two three question article 112 of constitution of india comes under uh, or in which the union budget comes then since 2017 we are presenting our budget from the 1st of february and this change was brought by arun jetli who was the finance minister at that time so two to three questions done from this all right then the budget is presented by the means of the financial bill and the appropriation bill which has to be passed by both the or has to be passed by the houses then if we start this the union budget comes into effect from april 1st highly important thing here it is when it is presented it is presented on 1st of april but from which date it comes into effect it is your 1st of april the budget divisions of the department of economic affairs in the finance ministry is the nodal body responsible for producing the budget acha one more thing tell me finance related bill comes in which house they are always presented in the lok sabha all right finance related money related bill are presented in lok sabha just remember this out this is your lower house coming back the budget was first introduced in india on 7th of april 1860 so first budget that was introduced in india that was during the colonial or the british era that is in 7th of april 1860 when scottish economist and politician james wilson from the east india company presented it to the british crown the first union budget of the independent india was presented on 26th of november 1947 remember this is the first budget of the independent india and who was the person who presented this budget it was presented by rk shamkun chetty ji that was presented on 26th of november 1947 all right remember these thing first budget of in the history of india by the britishers were in 1860 and for independent india it was on 26th of november 1947 then in 1951 to 52 cd deshmukh was the first indian governor of rbi 
who presented the interim budget. In 1958 to 59, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was the first Prime Minister who presented the Union budget. Important question: Who was the first Prime Minister of India who presented the Union budget? And he was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. As we know, these budgets are basically presented by whom? They are presented by the Finance Minister. All right. So clear. Moving on. In 1959, Moraji Desai became the first became the Finance Minister of India. Who presented the maximum number of budgets so far? That is ten. He presented two budgets on his birthday, and that is on 1964 and 1968, as he was born on 29th of February. Coming back, if asked, who is the person who has presented, or who was the finance minister of India who presented the maximum number of budget? He will be Moraji Desai, and the total number will be ten. Next. From 1970 to 1971, Indira Gandhi was the only women finance minister who took over the finance portfolio. Union budget 1973 to 74 was known as the Black Budget of India as the budget deficit rose to rupees 550 crore. All right, so which budget is known as the Black Budget? It is your 1973 to 74. Mark this also. Next, P. Chidambaram from in 1970 to 1997 to 19. 98 P Chidambaram presented a budget that was termed as dream budget another who presented the dream dream budget it was presented by P Chidambaram and in which year in 1977 1997 to 1998 important dream budget black budget and the maximum number of budgets was presented by which finance minister Moraji Desai and that the number will be 10 all right Now let's come to the highlight of the budget of the this year that was presented on first of Feb by Nirmala Sita Raman ji. Rupees thirty four crore allocated for anti corruption Amstan Lokpal twenty twenty three to meet its establishment and construction related expenditures. All the information from here will be important. I suggest you take the note in a one liner format. How much amount allocated for anti corruption Amstan Lokpal? It is thirty four crore rupees. Then Justice Pinaki Chandra Ghosh became the chairperson of the Lokpal with eight other members to inquire and investigate allegations of corruption against public functionaries. That you should know. Then CVC, that is your Central Vigilance Commission, has been allocated forty one point nine six crore rupees for twenty two twenty three. Next, the government has lowered its estimates of revenue from the telecom segment to rupees fifty two thousand eight hundred six crore rupees for the next financial year of the year twenty two to twenty three. Next, government will set up an expert committee to address regulatory issues faced by the venture capital and private equity players. The Indian Council of Cultural Relation, that is ICCR, will be allocated three twenty crore rupees. That is an increase of twenty crore from the previous budget. Mark this. ICCR that is Indian Council of Cultural Relation will be allocated how much amount 320 crore rupees that is 220 crore rupees more from the previous budget next 5000 crore rupees has been allocated for covid-19 vaccines in the union budget of 2022 to 2023 why this is important because it is a era of covid-19 and we want to vaccinate as much population as we can so this question can be asked how much amount will be was allocated for covid-19 vaccines it was 5000 crore rupees next the total assistance to the other autonomous bodies are rupees this much next an amount of 31 crore 3100 crore rupees has also been earmarked for the special diplomatic expenditure next mark this there have been 73 annual budgets and 14 interim budgets and four special budgets or mini budgets since independence jawaharlal nehru indira gandhi and rajiv gandhi are the only prime minister who presented the budget but who was the first prime minister to present a budget was jawaharlal nehru mark this all right after that indira gandhi and then rajiv gandhi presented the budgets also but the first prime minister of india who presented the budget was jawaharlal nehru and as of now 73 budgets 73 annual budgets has been presented 14 interim budgets and four special budgets have been or mini budgets have been presented since independence and the first time after independence it was 26 november 1947 that we presented the first budget in history of india and if we are talking about all over 
or you can say even in the history of india during the british era also it was 7th april 1860 when we presented the first budget all right moving on now why 2047 is an important or you can say amrit kal vision for india as you know in 1947 26th of november we presented our first budget so that means on calculating it will be 2047 that will be presenting our 100th budget so for that reason only 2047 is declared as amrit kal or you can say india at the rate of 100 that is in 2047 it will be our 100th budget presented all right fiscal year 23 budget has prioritized the following four sectors along with the overall growth basically on four or one more thing you should remember there are part a and part b in the budget all right there are two parts can be asked moving on so in this basically four sectors are been targeted pm gati shakti that means connecting various roads and various areas in india inclusive development productivity enhancement and investment sunrise opportunities energy transition climate action then financing of investment as we know we are more focusing on the foreign direct investment now because we want and we have scope for growth in this sector because we want various industrialists various businessmen from all over the world to come and invest in india that will help us to grow even faster all right so first we will look at pm gati shakti it is a multi model logistic park mm lps that is multi model logistic park contracts for the implementation of this mm lps will be awarded through ppp triple p model what is triple p triple p is private public partnership in 2022 to 2023 at four locations it will benefits northeast uttarakhand himachal pradesh and kashmir all right then if we talk about railways the concept of one station one product concept will help the local businesses and supply chain why this is important if you remember one district one product one district this was a scheme if you remember that was launched by uttar pradesh what was the aim of it did they wanted to export their product or make their products famous of a particular district all right such as if we talk about worli painting worli painting worli painting is famous for maharashtra so if we can scope if we can create awareness about this worli painting on a large scale and if we can start exporting it then it will be highly valuable for the culture of the maharashtra as we are preserving the culture and we are making the fa culture famous also of, of the maharashtra so similarly one product one district scheme was for uttar pradesh and similarly one station one product concept will help local businesses that are the on a smaller scale to make their business big and will be a part of a supply chain the 2000 km of railway network to be brought under the kavach with the indigenous world class technology and capacity augmentation in the 2022 to 2023 as we are increasing the railway network it will also help us to connect various areas various areas of the right and one more thing remember this pm gati shakti multi model logistic park it is a digital platform that is aiming to bring 16 ministries including railways and roadways together for integrated planning and coordinated implementation of infrastructure connectivity project all right next parvatmala national ropeway development program parvatmala will be taken upon on triple p model as we saw public private partnership for ecologically sustainable alternative to conventional roads in difficult hilly areas as we know first ropeway service it is a ropeway only parvatmala that we are talking about here all right first ropeway service for uh, civil use you can say or for transportation or for public transportation it was started where it was started in uttar pradesh only first ropeway service for civil transportation then remember contracts will be awarded in this year for eight ropeway project that will be a total of 60 km in length this is parvatmala related to your ropeway next then if we are talking about unblended fuel to encourage the efforts for blending of fuel 
Unblended fuel shall attract an additional differential excise duty of two rupees per liter from 1st of October 2020. To mark this, how much excise duty has been increased on the unblended fuel, and from it will be applicable from which date? Also tell me. So two rupees per liter has been increased. All right. Shall attract an additional differential excise duty of two rupees per liter, and the date. from which this will come into effect will be 1st of october 2020 to mark this remember these two things then duty on umbrellas is being raised to 20% exemption to parts of umbrellas being withdrawn so question will be asked what is the duty on umbrella being raised so it is how much duty is being or how much percent duty is being raised on umbrellas it is 20% mark this then jewelry export to facilitate export of jewelry through e-commerce a simplified regulatory framework will be implemented by june 2022 then now we know when budget is presented some x items become expensive and the cost on some price decreases so here are the list of items that would become more expensive and the tax reduced on custom duty is 5% that you need to know such as unblended petrol and diesel will become expensive here are the expensive list all right umbrella will become as we know 20% was increased imitation jewelry increased single multiple loudspeakers will increase price of earphones headphones will increase smart meters will increase solar cells now solar energy as we are talking so solar cells will also increase in price solar modules will increase x ray machines parts of electronic toys these all are the items whose price will increase in the coming years then these are the expensive but what are the items that would become cheaper post budget 2022 such as frozen mussels frozen squids as a fortida cocoa beans methyl alcohol acetic acid cut and polished diamonds camera lens for cellular mobile phones all these items their price will decrease that means they will become more cheaper in the coming years next now here will be talking about kane betwa river interlinking project kane betwa project just give it a simple name kane betwa project kane is a river betwa is also river can you tell me in which state is kane river located kane is located in madhya pradesh and betwa it is located in uttar pradesh all right so so remember these two rivers will be connected all right kane in madhya pradesh will be connected to betwa in up it will be the india's first river interlinking project first river interlinking project mark this important thing all right highly important then remember ministry of jal shakti has approved in the budget with the cost of 44605 crore rupees for the implementation all right this amount has been allocated for this apart from this remember this will be completed in 8 years the time allocated is 8 years for this this kane betwa link canal will be 221 km long and this will also include a 2 km long tunnel also all right then remember due to this interconnection of these two rivers a total area of 9.08 lakh hectares of the farmer land will be helpful for the irrigation that means the amount of water or you can say this interconnection will help 9.08 lakh hectares of land in the irrigation it will provide water to the farmers to irrigate their land then remember next thing is panna tiger reserve was included in the global network of biosphere reserve by the united nation educational scientific and cultural organization in unesco that is an additional information you need to know because it was mentioned in your budget so it can be important all right moving on then we talk about skill development as we know various initiatives various schemes are being started by the state government central government even we are taking help of the various organizations such as amazon 
your flipkart your microsoft what they are doing is they are helping or they are tying up with various governments to provide skill to the people so that they become skilled and they can opt for their employment so similarly digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood that is your desh stack a portal will be launched to empower citizens to skill reskill or upskill through an online training mark this desh stack a portal desh stack e portal remember this if asked this portal is related to what this is a portal for providing online training or for skill development of people similarly startups will be promoted to facilitate drone shakti and for drone as a service dras these both are dras or drone shakti they are both related to drone and they are to promote startups initially if you remember there was a news that india won't be importing drones from other countries so drones will now be made in india only if you are in india if you are living in india and you want to purchase a drone you can purchase a drone that is made in india only you cannot import a drone from other country all right so that means other players or the other companies that are making drones in different part of the world they cannot come and sell their drones into india all right so remember these two drone shakti and drone as a service they both are related to drone only similarly if i ask you first drone mela where was the first drone mela held it was held in gwalior and various gwalior gwalior is in madhya pradesh then we talk about education one class one tv channel remember this one class one tv channel is related to what sector it is related to your education sector this program of pradhan mantri e vidya to be expanded to 200 tv channels from 12 to provide supplementary education in the regional languages for class 1 to 12 that means from class 1 to 12 in the regional languages multiple channels will be established that will help on providing information or the syllabus that is taught in the school let me teach again one class one tv channel that means for one class say we say for class 3 all right similarly for class 3 there will be a tv channel for hindi there will be a tv channel for english one tv channel for your sst math that will be covering the subject related or the syllabus related to that particular class of that particular targeted students only similarly 200 tv channels will be launched from 12 to provide supplementary education in regional languages that means as we know 200 tv channels is a lot of inform number of channels so why so many channels because in they will be covered in multiple languages in the regional language if we are if someone cannot talk in hindi and he is just watching the tv channel that is providing the maths of class 5 in hindi only so he won't be able to get that much information for so for that so for that person a different regional channel will be there that will be providing mathematics of class 5th in their own native language in their mother language the digital university for world class quality universal education with personalized learning experience to be established also so a digital university will be also established next there are some key allocation under education that you need to know some data some amount of money that has been allocated so the education budget for the year 2022 has been allocated rupees 1,4278 crore rupees that is an increase of 11.86% that is around 11 crore rupees from the previous year that means this year's budget or this year india will be spending around 1 lakh 1 lakh 4278 crore rupees on the budget itself that is an increase of 11000 crore rupees from the previous budget similarly you can see here some the distribution department of social education and literacy 63000 crore rupees similarly department of higher education this month samagra shiksha abhiyan will be spending 37 crore rupees pm poshan will be spending 10000 crore rupees strengthening teaching learning and result for states around 550 crore rupees this is stars but what is stars stars is a new project that includes a world bank loan aims to enhance the capability of six kids they are himachal pradesh kerala rajasthan madhya pradesh maharashtra and odisha mark this how many states are there in the star scheme or in this start project there are six states in this stars project who is pro funding the stars project it is funded by world bank and how which are the states himachal pradesh kerala rajasthan madhya pradesh maharashtra and 
odisha the next thing is national education policy of 2020 that is nep it requires that india need to meet 6% of the gdp in education this was data was released if we are talking about nep when was the first national education policy released it was released in 1968 then it was released in 1986 and after this it was edited in 1992 sometimes the student will get confused that it was also released in 1992 but no it was not released in 1992 the addition of NEP of 1986 was edited in 1992 and after 1992 it was released in the year 2020 all right next one more thing you can remember here we are talking about this blackboard operation blackboard when did operation blackboard came it came in the year 2001 moving on then if we talk about women and child empowerment nari shakti the harbinger of women led development during the अमृत काल मिशन शक्ति मिशन वस्त्रालय सक्षम आंगनबाड़ी एंड पोषण 2.0 पॉइंट ओवर लॉन्च रिसेंटली टू प्रोवाइड इंटीग्रेटेड बेनिफिट्स टू वीमेन एंड चिल्ड्रन सक्षम आंगनबाड़ी दैट इज योर रूरल चाइल्ड केयर आर अ फ्यू न्यू जनरेशन आंगनबाड़ीज विद बेटर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टू लैक आंगनबाड़ीज विल बी अपग्रेडेड अंडर द पर्टिकुलर स्कीम दैट इज योर सक्षम आंगनबाड़ी ऑल राइट सो वेरियस आंगनबाड़ी वेरियस मिशन वेरियस वस्त्रालय सक्षम आंगनबाड़ीज पोषण 2.0 पॉइंट ओ दे वर लॉन्च सो दैट द पुअर पीपल एंड द पुअर वीमेन कैन बी बेनिफिटेड थ्रू दीज स्कीम्स देन अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इज हर घर नल से जल नल इज योर टैप सो हर घर नल से जल रुपीज सिक्सटी थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज विल बी अलोकेटेड टू कवर थ्री पॉइंट एट करोड़ हाउस होल्ड इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री टू प्रोवाइड रनिंग टैप वाटर फॉर एवरी हाउस होल्ड रिमेंबर दिस बजट दिस अमाउंट इज इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ मच अमाउंट अलोकेटेड फॉर हर घर नल से जल सिक्सटी थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज एंड हाउ मेनी वॉट इज द टारगेटेड अमाउंट दैट इज थ्री पॉइंट एट करोड़ हाउस होल्ड इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सिमिलरली इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल वी नो देर इज अ स्कीम फॉर हाउसिंग ऑल दैट इज योर प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना सो फोर्टी एट थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज वॉज एलोकेटेड फॉर हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल दैट इज टू बी अलोकेटेड फॉर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ एटी लैख हाउसेज इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री अंडर प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना सो फॉर प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना दैट इज योर हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल फोर्टी एट थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज वॉज एलोकेटेड फॉर हर गल नल से जल सिक्सटी थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज वॉज एलोकेटेड मूविंग ऑन प्राइम मिनिस्टर डेवलपमेंट इनिशिएटिव फॉर नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन दैट इज पी एम डिवाइन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट सी हेयर आर सम ऑफ द लिस्ट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट अंडर दिस पी एम डिवाइन दैट वॉज स्टार्टेड यू कैन टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट पॉज द वीडियो रीड दैम ऑल जस्ट फॉर इंफॉर्मेशन यू नो एंड यू कैन सी द अमाउंट ऑफ बजट इन टू हाउ मच वॉज अलोकेटेड फॉर दैम देन इफ वी टॉक अबाउट ई पासपोर्ट ई पासपोर्ट विद इम्बेडेड चिप एंड फ्यूचरिस्टिक टेक्नोलॉजी टू बी रोल्ड आउट as we know nowadays everything is being digital you agree with me everything is being digital even if i tell you earlier the budgets used to be presented via paper that was rolled in a red cloth but from now as we saw the boom in the technology the budget was presented using a tablet all right that means we are using technology to present the budget nowadays that means everything is being digitized now so similarly our passports are also being digitized now which will be embedded with a chip and a futuristic technology that will be rolled out but basically what are e passports and biometric passport a e passport electronic passport or biometric passport is the international travel document with identity details such as passport number name surname nationality and date of birth as well as an electronic microprocessor chip containing data such as fingerprints photos and signatures it will prevent it will prevent fraudsters from conducting data privacy and making duplicate passport so this was also introduced during the budget next thing that was talked about was your electric vehicles as we know the state that has stopped in the most number of electric vehicles is your uttar pradesh highly important and the largest charging station for electric vehicles is being built in gurugram haryana next in a push for electric vehicle adoption the union budget introduced a battery swapping policy along with interoperability standards to improve efficiency in the electric vehicle ecosystem this will allow drivers to replace depleted battery blocks for freshly charged ones at a swap station that means you are moving in your car all right and suddenly your battery is dead 
what you will do will you wait for four to five hours to get your battery recharged no what you will do is you will move to a charging station similar to your petrol where you will go and deposit your battery that is dead and you will pick a new battery that will be charged so you can go on the work without any delay of time it will be a matter of just five minutes all right so this is what replace depleted battery means that means swapping of batteries you will be giving your discharge battery and you will be getting your charge battery from those stations it also incentivizes the private sector to develop sustainable and innovative business model for battery or energy as a service then moving on important thing i know most of you have also invested in cryptocurrencies so this is similar to that central bank digital currency cbdc what is cbdc cbdc is your central bank digital currency now india is also planning to introduce their digital rupee using blockchain and other technology that will be re released in any time that can be this uh, digital currency will be released soon okay so there is no hint given by the government but they are saying that they will be soon releasing their own digital rupee that is will be working on the technology of blockchain so the fiscal year 23 will see the introduction of the digital rupee or the central bank digital currency by the reserve bank of india who will be releasing this cbdc it will be released by rbi to boost digital economy using blockchain and other technologies the reserve bank of india act of 1934 is being amended to enable rbi to issue digital currency so which act of rbi is being amended this is important it is your act of 1934 is being amended to enable rbi to issue its digital currency all right what will be the benefits of this digital currency it cannot be torn or physically damaged or it cannot be lost because it is on your digitized and it will be on your computer on your servers forever lifeline is indefinite as compared to notes save the government the cost of printing there will be more access in the remote areas also moving on now let's move to the part b but why this i'm talking about specifically about part b is because recently union finance minister has announced the part b of the budget by referring the mahabharata shanti parva adhyay 72 shlok 11 mark this which part or which shlok was used shlok 11 and shanti parva adhyay 72 of mahabharata was used to announce the part b budget of our your uh, this budget all right and this is the king must make arrangements for yogashma welfare of the populace by way of amending any laxity and by governing the state in line with dharma along with collecting tax which are in consent with the dharma so basically while presenting the budget the uh, it was announced by starting or referring the mahabharata shanti parva adhyay 72 shlok 11 here important thing is this you need to pay attention all right then now this was about your budget now let's come to some important mcus that will help you in more preparation that will help you to revise all this budget and also note down some important things that we might have missed out let's start according to union budget of 22 23 presented by finance minister Sith nirmala sitaraman gdp growth in 21 22 is expected to be how much so the gdp growth is expected to grow by 9.2 percent in the fiscal year of 21 to 23 so the correct option here becomes option c all right this is the expected gdp growth rate next according to the union budget of 22 23 total expenditure in the same estimated at how much so the total expenditure is to be estimated around 39.45 lakh crore rupees all right this much is the total expenditure estimated so the correct option here becomes option c these are the questions all right these are the points you should note down next according to the budget the revised fiscal deficit was dash percent of the gdp in fiscal year 2022 against 6.8 in the budget estimates so i repeat the revised fiscal deficit was how much percent of the gdp in the fiscal year 2022 as against 6.8 in the budget estimate so how much percent was it of gdp it was 6.9 percent of gdp in fiscal year 2022 against 6.8 in the budget estimate how much amount is allocated for Atam Nirbar Bharat Rozgar Yojana for 2022 to 2023? So remember, important, how much amount is allocated for Atam Nirbar Bharat Rozgar Yojana? A total of 
64,000 करोड़ रुपीस इज अलोकेटेड फॉर आत्मनिर्भर भारत रोजगार योजना अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यू शुड ऑल्सो नो If question is asked, how many times Nirmala Sitaraman has presented the budget in the Parliament? So a total of four times. This is the her fourth budget, and the first person to or the person who has max uh, presented the budget maximum times is ten. Can you comment below? We just saw this in one liners. Comment below. Tell me now, fast. All right. Next, how much amount is allocated for the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers? welfare so a total amount of how much is allocated for the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare so a total of 132513 crore rupees is allocated for the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare next as per the budget har ghar nal se jal we just saw this scheme how many households to be covered in this in 2022 to 2023 i told you to remember the number also so a total of 3.8 crore rupee households to be covered all right 3.8 crore households and if we are talking about the budget 60000 crore rupees was allocated for this har ghar nal se jal next tax deduction limit increased from 10% to dash percent on the employees employers contribution to the nps account of state government employee so remember tax deduction limit increased from 10% to how much from 10% to it was increased from 10% to 14% all right next question any income from transfer of any virtual digital assets to be taxed at the rate of dash percent so as we saw about we know we were talking about the digital rupee it was in uh, basically india is planning to launch this digital currency so that the people who are trading in cryptocurrencies can pay basically to avoid that and they start investing in indian companies basically so if any one is if any person is investing in the digital cryptocurrencies still so they have to pay a total of 30% on their profit there will be no offset of the loss or profit they make remember this an additional of 1% will be charged on each and every transaction made by that person so similarly this is 30% any income from transfer of any digital assets to be taxed at the rate of how much percent 30% of the profit they make next customs duty on cut and polished diamonds and gemstones being reduced to dash percent highly important that the custom duty on cut and polished diamonds and gemstones are being reduced to how much percent it is being reduced to 5% we just saw this if you have paid attention in the video next question the government of india aims to achieve the vision for as we have discussed 2047 it will be the 100th budget of india that will be presented in the year 2047 so india at the rate of 100 is the correct answer for this next what will be the financial outlay for the prime minister's development initiative for north eastern region that is pm divine scheme so what is the financial outlay for pm divine it is how much can you tell me it will be 1500 crore rupees made to enable livelihood activities for youth and women under this scheme all right basically for north east region it is mark this next total receipts other than borrowing in 2223 estimated at dash crore rupees so total receipts other than borrowing in 2223 estimated at how much at 22.84 lakh crore rupees next how much amount has been allocated for completion of 80 lakh houses in 2023 to 2020 2022 to 2023 under pm awas yojana we also saw this how much amount was allocated for it 48000 crore rupees was allocated for it for the completion of 80 lakh houses next what is the percent of 5 lakh post offices to come on the crore banking on the core banking system so what percent of 5 lakh post office to come on the core banking system how much percent it is it will be 100% remember 100% of 5 lakh post offices to come on the core banking system next question additional allocation of how much it is saying additional allocation of how much was announced for production link in incentive for manufacturing of high efficiency solar modules to meet the global of 280 gigawatt of installed solar power by 2030 can you tell me so remember a total of 
19,500 crore rupees was announced for the production of linked incentives for manufacturing of high efficiency solar modules to meet the global uh, for the meet the goal of 280 gigawatt of installed solar power by the year 2030 so friends this was our video i hope you enjoyed our session this was a very fruitful session for you so if you haven't i i truly suggest you to watch this video two to three times because the questions and the pointers are highly important because budget is a very difficult thing to read for a normal person he cannot he or she cannot read the whole budget so in order for them if we are providing you with the simple information that you can pay attention and the useful information that will be asked in your questions directly asked in your exams directly so it is a helpful session all right so if you enjoyed the session i'll suggest you to like the video and do comment and tell us that what are your views on this video and if you want the video to continue if you want us to make multiple videos on multiple topics and st not stop making such videos comment below and tell us that how much you appreciate it also if you have any trouble regarding login or payment or any other issues then you can reach to us on our mail that is support at the rate of affairscloud.com or you can call us on the number 9677333862 and we'll resolve your issue as soon as possible also you should go and check our courses that are available at a very reasonable price and that will help you to boost your preparation